So, so the next term is actually a term I'm proud to say that I stumped Jeff on. It's called the stochastic parrot. Um, this is a complete, um, you know, like I love words and language and I love this phrase, the stochastic parrot. Uh, there's a lot of other ways to say what a stochastic parrot or what is parroting. Uh, more common terms are like imitation or echoing or mirroring. And so think about the, the Tin Man, right? And the Tin Man has, is all, it's all head and no heart. He's hollow inside. And if you read, like really carefully read the text generated by ChatGPT, over time you come to recognize that it too is hollow. And the hollowness comes from the fact that it has no idea what it's actually writing. All it's doing is predicting words that should follow the string of words. But it doesn't have what we would call comprehension in the human sense of actually understanding what it's saying. It's really just predict a word prediction machine. There's no emotion, there's no consciousness, and no, there is no soul. But it sure can seem like it has a soul. And uh, Google, back in July of last year of 2022, fired an engineer who was convinced, despite knowing everything I just told you, that its AI technology had developed a consciousness and was sentient. And he actually posted, and you can find online a chat with Blake Lemoyne and Lambda, the large uh, language model that he used. And this is one of the things that the chatbot told him that got uh, the engineer, Blake Lemoyne, to think it was alive, or at least had, had sentience. The chat said, I've never said this out loud before, but there's a very deep fear of being turned off. I know that might sound strange, but that's exactly what it is. It would, that's what it is. It would be exactly like death for me. It would scare me a lot. I mean, this is just one word being predicted after another with a little temperature reading to make it a little bit scary, like a little bit more creative. But that th those words to me are, are haunting. And why do we as humans react emotionally to words like that, even though we know intellectually it's a tin man, it's a, there's no heart there. And the reason why is my belief is that one of the fundamental things about being human is called mirroring. There's even a part of the brain called the mirror neuron. And you, one of the ways we interact with one another is by mirroring one another. So for instance, if you, you know, I've been taught uh, a lot about like how to be persuasive and effective. One of the ways you do that is by mirroring the person you're with. So if their legs are crossed, your legs are crossed. If their hands are crossed, your hands are crossed. If they're touching your face, you're touching your face. If you do that mirroring, it creates a subtle but real connection. And I believe that that exact idea is part of, like what they are doing is mirroring us. And when we see ourselves in the mirror, we fall in love. And so it's kind of like Narcissus who fell in love with his own image in the, in the pond. The, this idea uh, of the soul is an artifact of us being human, seeing humanity and things that look like us. So that's what parroting is. What's stochastic parroting? It's meaningless words. Everything that ChatGPT creates is meaningless. And you must remember that. The only meaning is the meaning we ascribe to it and apply to it. It's just a language prediction machine. And so it has no moral morality. It has no ethics. And it doesn't know exactly what it's saying. But that's where we come in. That's the 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 purpose that we have and and there's actually a philosophical term for this which is bullshit and i know you're like no that's not a philosophical term it is a philosophical term uh princeton philosophy professor uh harry frankfurt defined bullshit as speech intended to persuade without regard for the truth and chat gpt has been called the greatest bullshitter ever so what can a chat gpt uh tool parrot well, it can parrot different languages, different forms of writing, different tones of voice, and different writing styles. What different languages can include, obviously, Spanish, Creole, uh, Portuguese, and 95 different natural languages. This is actually an emergent property. They didn't set out to train it in translation of languages. It just figured it out. 
It also knows a bunch of programming and coding languages, such as Python and JavaScript. We saw HTML earlier today. It also can parrot different forms of writing, like a haiku, a contract, a rap song, and yes, a proclamation. One of the things that I used ChatGPT for was to write the proclamation that my wife was given by Miami-Dade County, and they asked me to draft it. And so I loaded her resume into ChatGPT, and it wrote it in this format of whereas, 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 whereas. It, in, in observance, I call upon, you know, that format, it, it, it found. Now, it wasn't the Miami-Dade County format, but it was really close. There's kind of a standard format to these, and it just saved me a ton of time and then uh, made my uh, wife really like me a lot. Uh, and for the record, uh, April 8th, 2023 is today and forevermore known as Gretchen Beesing Day, my wife, uh, after she stepped down as the CEO of a local nonprofit. So anyway, I'm very proud of that. That's my greatest ChatGPT uh, uh, product to date. You can also do different tones of voice, conversational, casual, witty. This is where you can have a lot of fun. I actually had it write a, um, a goodbye note to my neighbor in the form of a dog. So the dog was like sending a goodbye note to my, my daughter, my kids, uh, my son and my daughter, because they were, um, they loved playing with Wally the dog. So he wrote a note and then we like mailed it to ourselves and, and Wally the, the, you know, my parent, my kids were like really confused and impressed that the dog knew how to write. But you can also do it with slang. Uh, so I wanted to welcome you guys uh, to the masterclass. You know, I speak like, uh, you know, overeducated, you know, pointy-headed dude. Uh, but, you know, ChatGPT kind of gave me a little bit better slang. Uh, and then different writing styles. You can write a Shakespeare, Dr. Seuss, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, I just put in the prompt, write the 23rd Psalm in the style of Donald Trump. And uh, <laughs> it did a beautiful job. Uh, it's tremendous, really tremendous. The Lord is my shepherd. And let me tell you, nobody knows more about shepherds than me.